Hi, this is Stephanie from Sew It Online, and today we're going to show you a few features about your Baby Lock Brilliant on how to thread the needle, thread the machine, wind a bobbin, some of the basics to just get you started. Okay, so you just brought your Baby Lock Brilliant home. And so our Baby Lock Brilliant here is already threaded up, but we do wanna change our color. So I'm gonna show you the proper technique on how to not take off your spool of thread. We're gonna show you the best practices here. So right up here at the top, I'm gonna to clip our thread right at our spool. I'll take off the thread cap and the spool, and I'm going to take an unthread from the needle pulling down through the tensions because we do not ever wanna pull against the tensions here. So I'm gonna grab a new spool of thread here and we are gonna thread. There's a little icon over here that shows you how the thread's leading off. So it's gonna lead off from the back. I'm gonna fit our spool cap on here. Now our spool cap should be the same size or as close as we can get to the same size as the thread spool itself. And we are always gonna thread two-handed here. So I've got my thread and I'm going to go down around for the one. Now you're gonna notice here that there is a one with a circle and dotted line and there is a one with a solid line. The one with the solid line is going to be for threading the machine. The one with the dotted line is going to be threading the bobbin to wind the bobbin. So we're gonna do that here in a minute, but right now we're just going to thread the machine. So I'm gonna keep holding here with my hand. We're gonna go around the little silver bar here and it's gonna go up and draw around the area here. And also to remember, we do have to have the foot of the machine up when we are threading. So we're gonna go down the channel here and number three is right down here at the curve. It's gonna go around there and up to the top and you kind of have to spin it from right to left around to grab on to the hook there at four. And it's gonna go down that same channel. And then right here at the needle bar, that is number six. It's kind of a tricky one to do. So when we get to number six, I'm going to actually put the foot of the machine down. I'm gonna hold it with some tension and then it's gonna slide in there really easily. Now from here, we can thread the needle and we are going to go through our little groove here. And then right at number seven, there's a little groove up there as well. We're going to fit it into that groove. So it goes in that groove. And then it's gonna lock into place there. And then we can clip the thread on our thread clipper at the side of the machine. From there, we can take our lever, give it a snap, and our machine is threaded up nicely. So now I can give myself a little bit of room. And then if we go over to here, we've got a lot more buttons than we're used to. But up here on the top of our lid, we've got little icons to tell us what menu we need to be in for what stitch. I'm just gonna go to a straight stitch for utility stitches. So I'm just gonna go to our utility icon here. It's gonna have a straight stitch, a zigzag and a buttonhole. So that one is lit up on our machine right now. And then I can choose whichever stitch I want. Say I want a locking stitch with a back stitch there. I'm gonna go to number three. So I will press zero three. It's gonna go to a center needle position. And then I can just grab some scrap fabric here. And once we are ready to go, I can do a straight stitch. And if we do want to change the length of our stitch, we've got our little plus minus buttons here that's going to let us lengthen up the stitch pretty far. Now if we do want to do a zigzag, we can just go to the next stitch there. We can go to eight or nine, whichever you want to do for locking stitches. And I can go to zero eight. It's going to move to the default and the default always is in it's always highlighted on the screen. So now we can go back to a zigzag. And we have selected our first handful of stitches. So I'm gonna kind of go into a few other things that we've got on the, on the screen itself here. 
So we can go into edit some stitches later, mirror some stitches, and also design some stitches and keep them in the pocket. We won't go into that today. Um, I will show you some hotkeys though. So if I want to backstitch and also to clip my thread when I'm done, I can go ahead and sew here just a little bit. I can hit the back. It's going to backstitch. It's going to stop and it's going to cut our thread. So now from underneath, we have our nice clipped thread here. And if I want to turn those off, all we have to do is turn them off and it's all back to normal. We've got our speed selector here. You can also use the speed selector by how much pressure that you're putting on the presser foot. We've got our, our scissors function, which is the greatest function here. So it's going to clip our thread from underneath once we're done sewing. We've also got our needle up, needle down button and we've got either a pattern end or a stop on a dime. So if we we're sewing and we need to stop, you can hit that button and it's gonna stop right there. It's not gonna take any stitch, any extra stitches. And then like I said before, there's our back stitch. And then also our start and stop button if you guys are using the start and stop instead of the foot pedal. So let's go back to some bobbin winding and also some more best practices about threading our machine here. Okay, so I've, I've been sewing here for a little while and I have ran out of bobbin thread. So I'm gonna open our little door here and I'm going to grab our bobbin. And up here at the top, we have our bobbin winder here. I am going to fit our bobbin right on top. It's gonna to give a little bit of a click when it's on there. And so we need to unthread our machine. So like I had shown before, we're gonna clip our thread here. We're going to pull the thread out down just the same direction as it would be stitching. And now from here, we do have those dotted lines for the bobbin winding path. So we're gonna go down and around, just like on one, but now we're gonna come up here and we're going to go around that bar in the back and then it's gonna tuck underneath this little disc here. And this is kind of a floating spring and that is going to allow that thread to wind on the bobbin correctly. So now we're going to wind in the direction that it gives us in our little video or in our little icon there. And you do kind of have to watch because it will want to come creeping out here on you and you don't want that to happen because if that does happen, what you're going to get is you're going to get like a bobbin that looks like this and it's very loose and it's very messy. And if you have a messy bobbin, that's going to definitely not give you great stitches. So I'm going to hold my thread at the spool and I'm gonna wind it around here just a few times to lock it on that bobbin. And then if I draw it around this little gray portion at the side, there are two little thread cutters there that if I just tug, it's going to lock that bobbin thread in there and then I'm ready to wind my bobbin. So I'm going to slide my bobbin over and it's going to lock in. The machine is going to know that it's in bobbin threading mode. Our start stop button is also going to change color and then we are able to put our foot down with the foot pedal and wind us a bobbin. And I'm not going to wind it too too full today but I am going to wind it full enough that I can keep on going here with my project. And once this does wind up pretty full this little silver spot is what's telling it to stop and not overfill the bobbin so it will not overfill but it will kind of start to stutter when it gets full enough and that means to stop and i won't even get there i'm just going to leave it here so whenever we're done we can slide this over and it'll go back into sewing mode i can take my bobbin and inserting our bobbin here, we have a nice little we have a nice little icon that shows us how we're winding. And our bobbin thread is going to wind off and wind off to the left hand side. So it's going to look like a P. So here's the, the circle of our P and then the, the post there. It's going to go in and then it's going to slide under our little gray portion here. 
And there is arrows on all this. It's gonna come up and around. And once you draw it over to here, there is a little thread cutter in there to keep it clipped. And then we can put our cover back on here and we're ready to go. And I'll go through the threading one more time since I have to thread the machine anyways. We are going to do this two-handed, remember? We're gonna draw down and around for the one. We're gonna go up and over for the two. And just remember, you wanna keep tension on your thread as you're going through because this is the most important part where the tensions are. And you wanna make sure that you're getting that thread into the tensions. And if I would have the foot down, you're gonna notice up here, there's a little door. That door is not gonna let me thread that hook area over there. So it's already giving us a little fail safe to tell us, hey, we can't thread, there's the door closed. So we have to keep that foot up. So we are able to go through, hook into there, and be able to thread the needle. And just remember, we're going through that little groove there. It's not holding into the groove, it's just, just resting in there, but it is going to go into the seven and click in. We're gonna cut on the side again and then give it a nice little tap on our lever there. And that is a little overview on how to sew and do some needle threading and bobbin winding with your Brilliant. We'll have more videos and everything to get more in depth on these machines because these machines have some really awesome features for you.